we hear it all the time. Maintaining a healthy weight for the long term is less about dieting and more about mindset. So how do we get that mindset? Hello and welcome to Living Well with Robin Stoloff, empowering you to live a healthier life. Today we're going to explore how to adjust our behavior to make healthy long-term changes in our life. We'll take a look at how we can live better, set our goals, and remove the quick fix mentality. Joining us now is a friend of mine I know for many years, Courtney McCormick. She's a registered dietitian and manager of clinical research for Nutrisystem. Thanks so much for joining us, Courtney. Hi, Robin. Thank you so much for inviting me. I know we've tried to do this multiple times, so I'm so excited that I can finally yes, be on your me podcast. Too. Today. And you've been on my radio show many, many times. So I'm glad we're finally doing a podcast together. Have a lot more time to to dig a little deeper. So just just a, give us a quick overview of what you do. Yeah. So um, my role at Nutrisystem, I am the manager of clinical research and nutrition. Um, My training, I am a registered dietitian nutritionist. That's my background. Um, I have a master's in public health. And, you know, I've spent most of my career really focusing on weight management, obesity management. Um, And really, you know, I started my career early on thinking more on the prevention side, really working with children and childhood obesity prevention, working a lot with schools and helping to change community environments. Um, And then I shifted a little bit. Um, I started a private practice where I started seeing mostly adults um, who really wanted to focus on managing their weight. So these were individuals who were already experiencing overweight or obesity and were really coming to me for um, really treatment and trying to figure out what's going to work best to help them lose the weight and help them maintain that weight. Um, So I did that for a couple of years and then I found myself at Nutrisystem. Um, where today I, you know, spend most of my time in research and product development, and I've been at Nutrisystem for about seven years now. Um, And really my role there is to support the nutrition strategy for the brand, um, really making sure that we are staying true to the evidence, um, that we really are incorporating what we know works in terms of nutritional science, in terms of weight management and the science, Um, And really making sure that we're integrating that into all of our programs and our products that we offer to consumers Um, and really trying to think about, you know, we know that there's lots of things we can do to support weight loss. Um, But the tricky part is how do you actually maintain that weight loss? Um, So, you know, absolutely. And and so much money is spent on weight loss in our country. And yet so many people are overweight or obese. It's a huge percentage of the population, which is scary. Yeah. And we know, you know, we know that there's healthy ways and there's unhealthy ways to lose weight. Right. And so at Nutrisystem, we really want to make sure that we're providing programs that are efficacious. We know they work. We know that they provide that healthy way of losing weight. And then we also want to build in those strategies that we know that we can help teach people and, and give them those skills and strategies so that they can be successful maintaining that weight loss as well. Yeah, because when you hear about Nutrisystem, I mean, the first thing, let's let's just put it out there. The first thing that comes to your mind is, okay, you buy the food, you eat the food, you lose the weight, you've heard the commercials, but then what happens, you know, you can't eat that food in every meal all the time for the rest of your life. So you actually have developed ways to go beyond that in the company. We have. So, um, you know, I mean, you're absolutely right. We provide that convenience, right? We provide that structure for the individual that's looking for structure. We um, ship the meals directly to the home, making it really easy and convenient. Um, We focus on portion control. So our meals are portion controlled. But I think where many people don't recognize is that we've also built in, um, you know, things like flex meals, right? So we want to start to teach people how they can create their own meals, because we do understand that they're, you know, you're not going to rely on Nutrisystem meals forever. Um, and so we've built these meals in so that a couple of times a week, people will actually um, swap out their Nutrisystem meal and they'll create their own meal or they'll go out to a restaurant and eat out. And we provide that guidance. We provide those tools so that they know how they can start creating those portion controlled, balanced meals, high protein, lots of fiber, lots of vegetables, right? What do those healthier meals look like that are gonna support your your weight long-term? Well, and that's realistic because of course, you're not gonna eat a Nutrisystem meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So that's a smart way of going about it. But let's just rewind and talk about what I mentioned in the beginning, mindset. You hear that so often. And even now you see, you know, Weight Watchers or Noom or all these new apps now, talking about getting your mind right, <laughs> getting your yourself in the place where 
you can actually do this. I mean, we can look up a diet online. I mean, that's easy. We have the information. It's following it. It's doing it. It's making it work with our own lifestyle. That's a lot harder, you know, easier said than done. And food is also attached to so many of our emotions. When we're kids, you know, you're learning that, you know, ice cream cone for getting a good grade or going out to dinner. It's attached to, you know, celebrations and fun. It's very hard for people to change that. It is. It is. And you're right. You know, and like I said before, there's lots of ways we can lose weight, right? And I think when we think about weight loss and weight management, we often think about that physical aspect. We think about, you know, we know that the calories we put into our body are important. We know that the calories we burn through movement and physical activity, that's important. I think sometimes what gets overlooked and, and I, I, again, you're right. I think a lot a lot of additional focus recently has come about around the mindset piece, but we often forget about that, how, how much that emotional piece, how much that mindset really plays into our weight journey. Um, and so it's important that we address those things. It's important that we look at, you know, how do we view our bodies? How do we think about the food we're, ch we're choosing and why are we choosing those foods, right? How do we think about setbacks and how we handle those setbacks? Because the reality is they're going to happen at some point along that weight loss journey, right? So how do you cope with those things? Um, how do you also go beyond just calories in and calories out and think about the role that sleep plays in our weight loss, you know, the role that stress management, especially this past year, right? How have we all dealt with stress and <laughs> yeah. managed our oh, stress? Wait, nothing went on this past year. What happened? <laughs> you know, um, you know, all of those things play a role in our weight loss journey. And so it's, it's important that we address those factors as well, and not just the food we're putting into our body and the activity um, that we're doing. So what's the first step, Courtney? I mean, there's so many people could be listening to this saying, I want to do this. I just don't know how, how do I even begin this? If I've gotten into this bad rut of not eating as healthy as I should, and I put on extra weight over the years and it's hard to really jumpstart it, isn't it? It is, um, you know, and I think the first thing I tell people is, is really take some time, sit down, reflect on why you're doing this, right? Why are you starting this weight loss journey? Why do you wanna manage your weight? Um, and go beyond that number on the scale, right? I think obviously people may have say, well, I'm doing this because I want to lose 10 pounds or I want to lose 40 pounds or, but why, right? Why, ask yourself, why is that number important? Um, you know, why is getting healthy important for you? Um, the, the reason it's important to really define that why, and I, and I encourage you to define it and not only define it, but write it down somewhere so you keep it visible. And so it's there all the time as that reminder. Um, but you're going to actually rely on that on those days when your motivation may kind of tank a little bit. Um, motivation can be kind of tricky. Um, when we start off on a journey, we're, we're really motivated, right? Think about how many times you may have started off on that weight loss journey and you were so motivated, you know, you wanted to change all these different behaviors that you're working on. Um, and then there's days where you wake up and you say, forget it. Why, like, well, I don't New want Year's, New on. Year's Eve, everyone, I'm going right? to, and by mid-February, it's back to where you were before, right? Why is that? How do you maintain that excitement? And I think uh, one of the things, you know, I've been doing this a long time. And one of the things that I've found with many people that I interviewed is don't try to jump in with both feet wholeheartedly. I'm never going to eat another slice of pizza again, you know, till I lose this weight because it's not realistic. And what right. happens is you defeat yourself and then you say, oh, I can't do it and forget it and, and just go back to your old habits. So I think one of the things you always recommend is, is kind of baby steps. Right, baby steps. So, you know, define that why, because it's going to be important to kind of keep that motivation going. But then also, right, think about those behaviors. Think about taking baby steps with that behavior. Um, I, I think it's important that we shift our mindset. We take the focus off that, that weight loss number, right? Yeah, of course, we all probably have that goal that we want to lose a certain number of pounds or we want to maintain our weight. But take the focus off that number and really focus on the behaviors that you want to change. Because when we start thinking about those behaviors and we start small, right? You don't want to jump right in and say, I'm going to change these five things, right? Just one small, simple behavior you can change and really focus on that. Focus on making it consistent. Um, and, and that's what's going to turn it into a habit, right? And so focus on that behavior um, as opposed to that number on the scale. Sure, I'm going to start my day with a glass of water. It's like an easy, really easy one for everyone. Or I'm going to take... 10 minutes in the morning to stretch or do some or walk if whatever it is maybe just just something that 
simple and easy because once you start, I think you build momentum. Once you mm -hmm. start to do something positive for yourself, you kind of say, you know, I've done something good for me today and I want to continue that as opposed to, you know, grabbing a donut on your way out the door or, you know, whatever, eating something fattening over lunch quick because, you, you know, you didn't plan ahead. So there's strategies that you can use that that can keep you on track. So just give us a few that you we could incorporate today. Yeah. Yeah. So I think when we think about behaviors, you know, again, starting small, um, also choosing a behavior that you really want to do. Right. So I think a lot of times when we start changing our behaviors, especially when it comes to, you know, how we're eating um, or how we're moving our bodies and incorporating physical activity, a lot of times the behaviors that we try to change are because either, you know, someone else is doing it, or we think it's something that we should be doing. But, you know, do you really want to do it, right? So ask yourself that, because if you really don't want to do it, you're probably not going to stick to it long term. Yeah, don't um, jog if you hate to jog. Exactly. <laughs> exactly like, don't try right? to jog. Like, yeah. Right. Um, and, but the really great thing is, is that when we talk about health and wellness, there's so many different behaviors that are going to get us there, right? So, so really sit down, take some time, think about what are the behaviors that you really want to do that are going to get you to that, that better place in terms of health and wellness and better weight management, right? So to your point, if you know that you don't want to jog, don't do that, right? Maybe you don't even want to start with activity at all. Maybe you want to focus on diet, or maybe you want to focus on your sleep or your stress management, but really figure out what do you want to do and start there. Um, and then once you kind of know what you want to do, think about if you have the ability to do it, right? So think of a scale of one to 10. I always say, try to be at like a nine or 10 in terms of how confident you are that you can actually do that behavior consistently. Um, if you feel that you're not there yet at a nine or 10, try to figure out how, how you can get there, right? Is there, are there additional resources you need to get before you can actually start doing this behavior? Um, so think about, you know, if you want to incorporate water, in, more water into your diet, right? Do you have a water bottle? Um, you know, do you need to set a reminder on your phone, right? Is that's a resource maybe to kind of keep, keep it at the front of your mind as you go through the day. Um, so think about are there resources you need? Are there skills you need to develop to make it easier to do that behavior? Um, if you want to cook more healthy meals at home, right? Maybe you need to check out a couple of YouTube videos and learn some new cooking, healthy cooking skills, right? So are there skills you need to do? Um, and then also think about sometimes we just need to break that behavior into smaller chunks, right? Maybe I know that I want to start walking more, but walking 30 minutes every day just isn't realistic for me. Um, so maybe I start off with, I'm going to walk five minutes, two days a week, right? Really trying to break it into smaller chunks, get really good at doing that small behavior, make it consistent in your life, and then build on that because that's really how we're going to build those healthy habits. That's a really good point, because as I was saying before, sometimes people just try to do everything all at once and it's just overwhelming and it's just it's just too hard to maintain that. So just little changes along the way can make a big difference. But how do you keep your mind set? I guess one of the things I find that helps me is when I start to see results, when I start to feel maybe a little tighter if I'm working out or more in shape or have more energy, I want to keep going. So sometimes when you see a little bit of result, and it can take a while. If you have 30 pounds to lose, you're not going to lose 30 pounds in a month. Let's face it. You didn't gain 30 pounds in a month. You're not going to lose 30 pounds in a month. You have to be realistic about it. But when you start to see even like a little bit of progress, that does help to keep people motivated. It does. And again, and you know, I encourage people to Go beyond just how you feel in terms of your weight, what that number says on the scale, right? Think about other areas of your life. Do you have more energy? Are you sleeping better? Um, you know, how do your pants fit, right? Maybe you're not losing pounds on the scale, but maybe you're losing inches, right? So really think about how you can assess your progress because you're absolutely right. I think once we start seeing some results somewhere along that process, it's going to keep, keep pushing us forward. It's going to allow us to then reflect back on those behaviors we changed 
and we're going to start adding more behaviors, right? So we start small and the more success we have with those behaviors, the, the more we're going to keep building on them. Maybe we make it bigger, make, you know, extend the behavior, or maybe we start to add new behaviors, right? I start with my sleep. I'm getting really great sleep. I'm feeling good. I'm having more energy. Then maybe I decide, you know, what, I'm going to have time in the morning to start preparing a healthy breakfast or so you, you just get that momentum builds and you just keep building on it such good points. And I want to talk to you about SMART goals. It's something that I have talked about for many, many years in all areas of life, not just about our, you know, weight loss, but we should take this a step beyond. We're talking about weight loss, but that's not just the bottom line here. You mentioned something about your health and your sleep and so forth. Our food is our fuel. It is you know, the gas in the car. And when you put in bad fuel, <laughs> your car's not gonna run very well. And that's just basically how we are. And, and there's a lot of folks that, you know, I hate to say it, but if they're not eating healthy, they don't know what it's like to feel good, to mm -hmm. feel, have that energy and to feel what good food actually means. And when they start to change what they eat, they, they feel so much, their skin's better. They look better they have more energy, their joints feel better. I mean, there's so many other areas that it can improve. And talk to us a little bit about that, the overall health and about SMART goals. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. I think, you know, once you start finding those small behaviors, making those behavior changes, you start to see how it impacts your life, right? The energy level, to your point, how your skin looks, you know, you just get this kind of this shift in how you feel. Um, and, and that just builds more momentum, right? And, and, and I think one way to do that is by creating those SMART goals. So when we think about changing behaviors, and for those that are not familiar with SMART goals, it's actually an acronym. Um, it stands for specific, measurable, active, reasonable, and time bound. Um, and this, these setting SMART goals is really the foundation for most um, most behavioral behavior change programs. So not just focusing on nutrition and weight loss, um, but any type of program that really focuses on how we're going to change our behaviors. You know, whether it's smoking cessation programs, lots of different programs that are looking towards health outcomes. Um, so again very grounded in research and evidence mm -hmm. using those SMART goals. Um, but walk you know, if I walk, give us an example of how yeah, you so, would use that. Yeah, so let me walk you through that, right? So the S is specific, like I said. So that means that you really need to get specific on what that behavior is. What's that goal that you're going to work sure. on? It's right? not just, so, I want to lose weight. I mean, that's not specific. <laughs> right. So <laughs> right, we're saying, you know, well, I'm going to eat healthy, right? Not specific, right? What does that mean? What does eating healthy mean? What does losing weight mean, right? So if I set a specific SMART goal, I'm going to say that, you know, I'm going to pack my lunch for work on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of this week, right? So very specific, you know exactly what you're going to be doing. And the M is measurable, right? So if I say that it's measurable, right? I know that at the end of the week, I can look back and say, okay, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, did I pack my lunch, right? It's, it's measurable. I know whether or not I did it. So the more specific we are, the more we put numbers to it or something we can actually track. Again, we can hold ourselves accountable at the end of the week or at the end of the time and, and look back and reflect on that goal. We can determine whether or not it actually, you know, did we do well with it? Did we not do so well? And we can reflect on if we didn't do so well, what do we need to change, right? What didn't work and why didn't it work? So it really allows us to assess and try to kind of troubleshoot if we need to. Um, the A in SMART is active. Um, I think this is a really important one. We want to make sure that what we're setting that goal for is, is something that we are doing, right? So your goal shouldn't be something that you're not going to do, right? I'm not going to go to the vending machine this week. Well, that's great, but what are you going to do instead, right? Okay. So I always thought the A was attainable. I always heard that. So, Either one, I guess. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So there are different versions of SMART, yes. right? Yes. Um, I really like active, though. I think we really need to make sure that what we're saying what we're going to do, right? We're not going to talk about what we're not going to do. What are I you like gonna that. Do? I actually do. Yeah. Uh, so that's active. Um, and then the R is the reasonable, right? Or some people use that attainable, um, but yeah. making sure that it's reasonable. It's something that you realistically can do. Again, going back to, do you have the ability to do it? Nine Absolutely. or 10 on that confidence scale, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm, you know, like I'm not going to become a gourmet chef and cook all low fat meals, you know, this entire week. That's probably right. not going to happen. So right. pick something you can do. 
Yes. Um, I know for me, I actually like, I, I'm big onto planning, um, planning. I, I, think I know you are. Our radio, all of my radio interviews probably talk so healthy. about planning. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, so uh, for me, reasonable is, is also looking at like, if I know that I'm saying I'm going to meal plan this week, you know, I pull out my calendar when I'm doing that. And I look at like, well, what's reasonable for me, right? Am I going to do it five days? Probably not, because I know my son has swimming on Monday. So we're probably not going to do anything on Monday. I know Friday, we're probably going to go out. So it's not going to be Friday. I do what's reasonable, what's realistic for me and our schedule. And then the T is time bound. So you really want to make sure you're setting a time for how long are you going to do this goal? I usually like to recommend weekly goals because I think if you do, a week seems like a nice period of time to try something out and then you reflect on it, right? At the end of that week, you say, how did it go? How didn't it go? Um, do I need to readjust it a little bit more? If it went really great, you know, am I at a point where I can build on it and add a little bit more for next week? Um, and so making sure that you set a specific time that you're going to end that goal and be able to look at it. That's, this can be used for just about anything in your life, exactly. you know, your job, your career, your, if you're, as you said, it's about smoking, it can be used for almost anything in your life. And it's such a great way. And I wish kids were taught it at a young age, because if we had this growing up, it'd be so much easier to, um, to, to achieve our goals in our lives. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's important when we talk about goal setting, right? Really make sure we start small. Um, and really setting those SMART goals throughout the week. That's so true. And how important is it to write it down and or, and probably to have a friend or a family member helping us out? Um, it's very important. I think social support along the way, one, to your point, writing it down, because we, we always need that reminder. Um, but then also social support's really important, but social support can also be a little tricky at times. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, we may find that social support could backfire on us, right? Sometimes we may have those friends or family members that may not be as supportive as we would like them to. But I think the really important thing when we talk about social support is making sure, again, we want, we want to be the ones in, to control how, who we're enlisting to support us in this journey and controlling kind of where we see that they need to support us. So it's important to, to think through who's going to support me, what's the support I need, and then you go have those conversations with those people, right? You, you get really clear on saying, hey, this is how you can really support me along the way. Here's my goal for the week, right? My goal is to pack my lunch every day, um, you know, and, and then I enlist my spouse or another family member to, to kind of hold me accountable yeah. and make Did sure I'm doing it, it right? right? <laughs> or do it right. together. I mean, that's such a big, important thing to do. Um, do it together, you know, where you can like, all right, maybe, you know, maybe someone has to lose weight or not, who knows? Um, maybe someone has to lose weight um, or maybe they don't, but certainly people can try to eat a little healthier together that everyone can do that. Just mm -hmm. change something up. Or as you said, pack a lunch, whatever it is, or get a friend to meet you to work out. I think that's such a good one to walk or meet at the gym or whatever it would be. Even do a workout together online if you're, you know, not able to get in touch with each other in person. But doing those kinds of things do that does help keep you accountable. Absolutely. And you know, again, something we know from from the scientific literature and the research, right, is that when people team up together, they're more likely to be successful. So especially when we talk about health and wellness, right, it's not always about weight loss, right? Can you enlist others in your family? Because we all can do things to be healthier, right? So do you enlist others in your family? Maybe make it a competition, right? Maybe you set goals together. Yeah. What's something that all of you want to work on this week? And you set that SMART goal as a family. Um, again, the focus doesn't have to be on weight loss, right? We don't have to be encouraging everyone in the family to lose weight. Maybe it's just eating a healthy breakfast or adding a, a new vegetable to our diet for the week, right? Yes. We can make it a competition, make it fun um, and get everybody involved. And you have kids and I, you, they're probably, you know, they probably eat better than any kids on the block, I'm sure. <laughs> but how do you start, you know, instilling these habits? If, if someone has young children, what is the best way? Is it to set the example yourself? Is it to talk to them about it? Is it all of the above? 
Um, yeah, you know, actually we joke, I have a, a one-year-old right now and we call her copycat because she copies everything that everybody else in the house is doing, right? So okay. kid, kids look to us as role models. Yeah. Um, so what we put on our plate, what we, how we move our bodies, you know, they're watching that. Um, so I think just being that role model for the kids, um, making sure that healthy choices are available, right? And then really leaving it up to the kid to decide whether or not they choose to eat that food, right? So my kids will always have a fruit or vegetable on their plate. Whether or not they eat that food, I leave it up to them, right? We don't, we don't force it. We don't, we don't argue about it. We don't use it as a bribery. You know, you need to eat this before you have dessert. Um, really, we set the example by putting it on their plate and saying this is part of our meal. Um, and then I leave it up to them to decide, you know, do they want to well, eat it? Well, do they eat the broccoli? Because that's tough to get a kid um, to eat vegetables. <laughs> again, I think it goes back to role modeling. I will say my kids, you know, we the, typically the fruit and vegetables, the first thing they eat on their plate, um, we're working on protein. Protein seems to be the challenge for my kids. Um, yeah, yeah. But but yeah, I think it's, you know, again, but showing them that there's a variety of foods, um, you know, and, and also I always, I've always talked about moderation, right? My kids still get some of those sweet treats. Um, again, it's just in moderation. Um, and we really don't, we don't make it the main focus, right? It's just something that's there. Um, yeah. And I think it goes back to, again, shifting our mindset and just being more mindful, right? There's, and, and really understanding why we're eating, right? And, and there are going to be times where we eat because it's emotional, right? It's, it, you know, the holidays are a great example of this. We, it's a social thing, right? We, we sit down with the family, we enjoy a good meal. Um, and then there's other times where we're eating because it's true, you know, phys we're physically hungry and just learning to recognize that because I think the more we're mindful of that, when we can really recognize that, okay, I'm eating now because I'm physically hungry versus, okay, I'm eating now because I'm stressed, um, because I'm happy, I'm sad, right? Once we can start to differentiate between those two kind of types of eating, I think especially when we talk about weight management, that becomes important because then we yes. can really reflect, you know, did I eat because I was hungry or did I eat because I was stressed out? Right. And so if that I'm being aware out, and writing it down is like right. is what you said, why did right. I eat this? And if you can write that and identify the issue. And one of my things my whole life has been, you know, a little bit of an extreme. I'm Italian. <laughs> We like to eat, you know, when my mom would cook, it was just more food than anybody could. There's always leftovers. That's just the culture of it, you know? So we were always used to kind of overdoing it. So when I would ever try to really, you know, tighten it up, I would just say, I'm not gonna eat that at all because if I would have a little bit of it, I would have a lot. And so that is something like, I know my own personality. That's mm -hmm. something I know I need to work on. And I'm sure there's other people like that. Like, I'm just not gonna have any bread because if I have one piece of bread, I'm going to have three pieces of bread, you know, at dinner or whatever it is. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure which way works better. I mean, I've tried, I tell the waiter sometimes, don't bring the bread. I just don't mm -hmm. want to see the bread. <laughs> don't put it in front of me because I want to, I want to eat it. I know mm -hmm. myself. So, but I'm not sure, should I be putting the bread on the table, just trying to have one piece? You know, you need to figure out your own personality and what's best for you, I guess. Yeah, no, I think you're right, right? You got to figure out what works for you. And I think you also have to really think about, you know, how often does that happen, right? If, if, if you're going out to eat every week, then yeah, I think asking, you know, the wait staff to not bring the bread basket makes sense, right? Because you yeah. probably don't want to be doing that every week or every other day or how often you're eating out. But on the other side, you know, if it's something that it's, if it's Thanksgiving dinner, right, or it's around the holidays, and you know, it's, you know, it's that one special time a year, maybe two times a year that you get to enjoy that, then, you know, then that's when I say, go ahead and enjoy it, right? Because that's where we want to be able to fulfill that emotional piece, um, where there is that connection between our food and our emotions. And, you know, maybe it's your grandmother's recipe that you only get once sure. a year, right? Yeah. Then I say, like, that's when you can really enjoy it. And I think that's when it's important to be mindful, right? You, you take an appropriate portion, you eat it slowly, you know, you're not eating it in front of the TV while you're watching the football game at Thanksgiving, right? You're, you're really sitting at the table, you're enjoying it, you're mindful of, you know, thinking, how does it taste? How, how do you feel in that moment? And you're enjoying it, and then you move on, right? Yes, and, yeah. and, and you don't feel bad about it. Because I think a lot of times we also tie that emotion to our food where we, you know, we eat something, and then we feel guilty for it, or we feel like, oh, you know, I, that's a setback that I had 
forget it the rest of the day is over. I'm just going to eat whatever I want for the rest of the day. No, we enjoy it and we move on and we get back on track. Yeah. Onto our wellness. Well, my husband does it great. He packs his lunch. He, he eats really healthy, he brings his lunch to work. But every now and then we'll go out to a burger place. He has the double decker, decker burger with the cheese and the, the egg on the top and French fries. And he'll do it. You know, he calls it a cheat meal. <laughs> and he just does it. And then right back. To eating healthy again like doesn't even affect him because he works out all the time and he just enjoys it and he doesn't feel one ounce of guilt because he knows he'll go right back to his healthy eating plan again but you know sometimes you just need to do that and you bring up the holidays oh, so many times in january we get on the scale and it's five or seven pounds more than it was in you know september and then we have to fight to try to lose that weight again so what are some tips to get through the holiday season as it comes up now yeah. So again, I, I think, you know, as we start off, I, I can't believe we're already, you know, approaching the holidays. We're almost at the end of 2021. I don't know where this Hard year went. Yeah. Um, but I, I would say if you haven't spent time to really reflect on why you want to get healthy, why you want to lose weight, do that, right? Because that's what's, again, going to serve as that motivation throughout the whole holiday season. Write it down, put it somewhere, whether it's on your refrigerator, whether it's on your nightstand, when you first wake up, you see it every morning, um, whether it's on a post-it note on the, you know, in your car, <laughs> so you see it when you leave every morning, put it somewhere where you really see that why. So you know why, why you're committing to a healthier lifestyle. It keeps you motivated, serves as that reminder during the holiday season. Um, and then I also say, you know, be really realistic. Again, what's reasonable for you during this holiday season, right? Is, is now the time that makes sense for you to start a weight loss journey? For some people, it may not be, right? Maybe it's just trying to build in some healthy habits and maintain your weight during the holiday season. So you're not one of those people who, you know, finds that you've gained five or seven pounds in January, right? Maybe just maintaining your current weight is where you want to be. So be really realistic around what's going to work for you. And then again, think about the behaviors, right? Set a goal, set a smart goal each week, focusing on that one behavior that you want to change. And, and when I say one, I really mean one, one really small behavior, right? Maybe it's I'm going to add a new vegetable this week. Maybe it's, I'm, you know, I'm going to try to get an extra 10 minutes of sleep every night, right? One behavior, because again, if we jump all in and say, you know, I'm going to change my sleep, I'm going to manage my stress this week, I'm going to eat better, I'm going to exercise. We're just kind of setting ourselves up for failure yes. because the reality is we're not going to do all those things, right? Absolutely. It's too much to start. So start small and just really build on it. Sure. And I also hear about holiday meals. Eat breakfast. Don't don't starve yourself. And, you know, you're you're so hungry at dinner that you just overeat. Everybody wants to enjoy it, but eat normally as you would in the morning. And another tip, and I don't know if this is true or not, I had heard put it all on the plate put it all, but try not to go back for seconds if you can absolutely help it. I mean, if, put as much as you want, but if you keep on going back, you really have no idea of how much you actually ate. Just mm -hmm. that's another thing that I've heard. I don't know if you agree with that or not, but something that I've heard. You know, I know I agree. I think especially when it helps kind of control portions, um, you know, another trick that I use is smaller plates. Um, so especially if you're out, you know, at a holiday party. Well, you um, just pile it higher than Courtney. That's... <laughs> Oh, you do. Now go for the smaller plate so you're not filling as much on there. Um, kind of keep it one level. Don't pile on high. <laughs> well, see, I already already beat that trick. I know how to do that already. But no, there's some. There are some ways. I think going back to what we said in the very beginning, it's mindset. It's just thinking about it. It's sometimes thinking about it in advance. And mm -hmm. I love the idea of writing it down. Just have like a little journal, even if you just jot down a few thoughts here and there. You don't have to, I, I, everyone says to keep a food journal and I think that's great. But for some people like myself, I find that hard to do. I try mm -hmm. and I recommend it for those who can do it. But I'm like, how many olives were in that salad? I forget and you know, my my the way that works best for me is just to just try to clean it up a little bit. Just, mm -hmm. you know, be yeah. smart about it. Yeah, and I, again, you know, I'm, I'm going to take it back to planning and being prepared. Um, <laughs> but, yes. you know, when, but, but, you know, have a plan, right? So if you know you're going to a holiday party, right, maybe you have that plan to say, okay, I, you know, I'm going to treat myself to dessert 
tonight. So maybe mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that I'm just more mindful of what I'm eating. You know, maybe I'll skip the appetizers and I'm going to be more mindful of what I'm eating for the main meal. I'm going to add more vegetables to my plate, stick to lean proteins, and then I'm going to treat myself to dessert. Or, you know, maybe I know that I want to have a couple cocktails. I'm going to stick to one, maybe two and drink water the rest of the night. Right. So you go into that event with a plan in mind. Yeah. Um, so you don't just show up and then, you know, have appetizers, then have your main meal and then say, oh, wait, dessert looks really good too. I'm going to have dessert. Um, sure. You know, so, so really kind of think about and have a plan as you're going into those holiday events too. The bottom line to really all of this is we have control of this. There's mm -hmm. no outside force controlling us. We're not puppets on a string that, oh, wow, well, we have to eat this. We can say yes or no. We mm -hmm. have control. And sometimes when you just get that in your head, like, I don't need to do this. I can say yes or no to this. It's my choice. And when you kind of think in terms of that, you know, just because everybody else is having a drink, you don't have to have a drink. Who says? You can choose what you want to do. And that takes a little sometimes digging deep, you know, a little, right. little fortitude there, but we, we have the choice and we can make that choice. And sometimes it's a matter of, yeah, you got to work at it a little and you got to sometimes give something up that you might want. But in the long term, I mean, what in life is that you've ever achieved that you do not have to give something up for education? children you've had to you know work hard and you know change your schedule to to raise good children anything in life that you that you've achieved or that's been good you've had to make some sort of sacrifice in some way and that's kind of you know you have to think in terms of that you can't just say oh it's so easy and i can just lose weight easily it, it, i'm gonna say it takes some effort yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I and I think you're right too in that mindset of just being in that mindset that you can control this, right? So, you know, really what we believe, that really is what comes to be, right? So I think it's important to just believe that you are that person that you you can control this. You can have, you know, that control of, of the situation, whether it's planning ahead, whether it's setting some smart goals. So you're kind of going in there knowing what your goals are. Um but then I also think as we think about, you know, there are going to be times where we have setbacks, right? And we just need to be compassionate with ourselves, right? We, you know, think about how you would talk to your best friend, right? That's how right. you should talk to yourself, right? Like, oh, like that's we a great tip. We shouldn't yeah. beat ourselves up um, if we have that one minor setback. Would you say to your friend, you're a loser, you can't do it. <laughs> it's right. too bad for you. Yeah, you wouldn't. <laughs> right now, you wouldn't, right? So, and I think that's where that also part of that mindset, right? Getting in that mindset of just being compassionate with ourselves, being patient with ourselves, because yes. it, it is going to take time, right? We're not going to lose that 30 pounds overnight. Um, so it's going to take time. It's going to take some patience as we learn these new behaviors and really turn them into habits. And Nutrisystem has some great tools to do this. Tell us about that. We do. So, um, I mean, I always encourage people to check out our lifestyle blog, The Leaf, and that's at leaf .com, um, because we have lots of great articles on there. We have lots of great articles um, on kind of healthy holidays. So as we approach the holiday season, lots of, you know, the great tips that, that you've already mentioned, um, uh, you know, we have articles on those with lots of more, lots more tips um, and lots of great recipes. So, you know, if you're looking for recipes of something to take to a holiday party, we have lots of healthy choices. Um, that's also one of my tips, my go-to tips is, you know, how do you make a healthy party or, you know, he healthier? It's you, you offer to bring something and you bring something that you know you, that you are able to enjoy, right? So we have recipes on there you can check out as well. Great, great tips. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this. I just, it helped me a lot too, because, you know, I'm human. <laughs> I like to eat. So it just helped me, you know, re really rethink some of the things that I do as well. And I'm sure you helped people watching or listening right now. So thank you so much, Courtney McCormick. We appreciate it. Well, thank you so much again, Robin. This was great. And, and I hope you have a great happy holidays. You as well. Courtney McCormick, Manager of Clinical Research for Nutrisystem. And thank you for joining me for Living Well with Robin Stoloff. Empower you to live a healthier life. Please be sure to subscribe and I'll keep you updated on my most recent episode. Again, thanks for being here and we'll see you next time. Until then, please stay safe and keep living well. Thank you.